Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to go through the Python code for the linear regression model that we have described in the past lesson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go briefly to uh, recap on what we learned in the last lesson. Then we're actually going to go through two different types of Python codes. The first one is going to use normal for loops to be creating the sums and everything for us. But the next one, I'm going to be introducing the NumPy package because Python has inbuilt functions that can actually take the linear regression uh, code that is defined in terms of a for loop and significantly simplify it as we're going to see in this lesson. So to recap a little bit of what we learned in the previous lesson, we have introduced linear regression, which is basically uh, we are taking a trending uh, points, linear points, and we're actually uh, fitting a best fit line to it. And we have introduced a concept called the reduction of the sum of the square of the residual. And we have also described this as uh, essentially an optimization problem, which is why we got the two partial derivatives in terms of A0 and A1. And we got the critical points by placing those equal to zero. Uh, we got these two equations and also by applying some sigma rules, we got uh, these and also by combining these two equations we got uh, the definition of a1 and also by getting the average at y average at x we can also get a naught so we can get the slope and the intercept to describe uh, the linear line. So in terms of the uh, code, so I'm going to go through a brief outline, then we're going to go through the meat of each uh, section. So we're going to be starting here by, of course, importing the data points, and it's going to require x, y, and also defining n, which is the number of data points. After we have uh, imported the data points, we're going to create the four different sums that we have said that a1 is defined in terms of. And once we have the four different sums and the number of data points, we calculate a1 and after that we get the average x average y then calculate a naught and once we have that we calculate the r squared and then we have all the information to create the equation the straight line equation and also the r squared to know the effectiveness of the model how much uh, are we capturing of the essence of the data points that we have so let's actually begin and go into each one of these sections so by importing x and y we're going to use the array keyword so basically you pass the list of keywords uh, or the list of data points that you have so basically array and you have two brackets here that are going to house the 20 points that you have and here i have comma and i'm basically telling the computer uh, that these are floats so in terms of y again array i pass the list of 20 points for the y and i do the comma float as well uh, for this one you can see here uh, after that, I wanted to find the number of data points and the number of data points basically are just the length of X or the length of X or Y, uh, whichever you would prefer. So N is equal to length of X. So now I have imported X and Y and got N. So let's actually go to the calculating of the sum. So these are, this is basically going to be four sum codes within one loop. So it's very, very simple. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to initialize the sum of x, sum of x squared, sum of xy, and sum of y, which are the four different sums in here. I'm going to say all of them are equal to zero. And we're going to be defining the loop for i in range n. So basically, this is going to go from zero all the way to n, but not including n. So in this case, n is 20. So it's going to go from zero all the way to 19, which means it's going to loop uh, 20 times. Uh, so this is, I'm using the shorthand notation for the sum code. So plus equal to instead of doing sum x is equal to sum x plus xi this is just uh, a shorthand notation uh, so basically this is going to be uh, summing all the x's and this is summing all the x squared summing all the xy and also summing all the y values so each one of them is going to basically uh, do x1 x1 squared x1 y1 and y1 and for the next loop is going to add this up to x2 x2 squared x2 multiplied by y2 uh, and also the last one is also going to add y1 to y2 and it's going to keep looping until it adds all the uh, 12 values or all the 20 values 
So once we have all the four sums, so we can actually get a one. And you can see here from this equation is going to be n multiplied by sum x, y, which is here minus uh, sum x multiplied by sum y, as you can see in the uh, numerator, divided by n multiplied by here sum x squared uh, minus, and this is the sum x uh, all squared. So once I have a one, I can actually work on getting a naught. And we know that a naught is depending on um, y bar and x bar, which is basically average. So uh, x median basically is sum of x divided by n. Uh, y median is uh, sum y uh, divided by n. So once I have these two, I can say a naught is equal to ym minus a1 multiplied by xm. So now I have a1 and now I have uh, a naught. So basically I have created the best fit for this model. But before we display anything, we have to actually create the uh, r squared. And we have said that the r squared is um, st minus the sum of the residual divided by um, um, st. So if you see here, sr or the sum of the residual is basically the sum of the square of the residual, which we have defined here. So the only difference between sr and st is basically instead of doing it in uh, relation to the model, we're doing it in relation to the mean. So if you look here, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, initialize st is 0, sr is 0, because again, we're also creating a sum, as you can see here, we're creating the sum of the residuals, and also we're creating the st, which is also a sum. So here is going to be st is equal to st plus, and here basically we're comparing uh, the y uh, of the measured compared to the uh, mean of that uh, model uh, squared. And sr is equal to sr plus, and you can see this is what we have described here in terms of the model. So y of i minus a naught minus a1 multiplied by xi all squared. And we can also use the shorthand notation here uh, for the sum code. So let me actually add equal sign here and uh, plus um, equal to, and I'm going to erase that. So that should create the st and sr, and we know that um, r squared is defined as st minus sr divided by st. So basically we create this line of code here, um, st minus sr divided by st. So this is a simple display code. So basically I wanted to print the uh, straight line uh, equation. So this is the first thing that I'm going to do. The next thing I wanted to print is this. So we're here you're still using string formatting. I do want to erase here, so I don't want to confuse you the point three. I'm going to explain it just slightly. So basically you do, uh, you create a string, y is equal to percent %f, which is basically the first um, uh, term here, plus percent %f x, the second term here. And of course, the first term we want it to be the intercept. And here, the second term, we want it to be the slope. And the same thing here, we're going to use a string format, which is going to say R2 is equal to percent %f, and whatever this percent %f is going to be replaced by this R squared. So let's actually run this code. Okay, perfect. So if I see here, we have displayed the straight line equation. We have here, this is the uh, intercept and this is the slope. And R squared here is 0 0.995007, which means we are capturing 99.5% of the behavior of this data point. So basically, this is a really, really great model. Now, the reason I will put 0 0.3 here, uh, so when I put 0 0.3 here and 0 0.3 here, I'm basically saying uh, what the percentage or the decimal places, um, sorry, the decimal places after here that I want. So here I want three. So if I run this, you can find that it reduced these to three decimal places. And I can do the same thing for this one. So let's assume that I want only two. So if I run this, it says, actually, let's actually do it to three as well. So if I run this, 0.995. So, so let's actually go through the second code, which is basically going to leverage the inbuilt functions in NumPy. So before I actually go into the code, we're going to import, import the NumPy as NP. And also from the NumPy, I want to import the array 
and also I want to import the sum function and I want to import the mean uh, because if you see here, uh, here we have created a lot of sums. We have created those four sums. We have also created the two sums in terms of ST and the residual. And also we created two means in terms of X and Y. So we're going to get the inbuilt function so we can actually create those without even uh, resorting to four loops at all. So importing the data points is completely the same. X and Y are still defined the same. Uh, N is still defined the same. So here is where the change comes in. A1 instead of actually doing uh, the the loops we're just gonna do this we're gonna do n multiplied by the sum function and we're basically gonna pass x and y so basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take x and y and it's going to basically be multiplying each one of those and summing all up uh, automatically and here we're just gonna do sum x basically we're summing all the x's and sum y and sum x squared and sum x uh, all squared so you can find this basically we reduced all this that we can see here all of this into just this one line of code here using the sum inbuilt function so if we look at a naught so if we look at a naught basically we're going to get the mean of y minus a1 multiplied by the mean of x so basically we reduced again all of this into just this one line of code here uh, and the same thing for st st is just sum and we're going to pass yi minus ym all squared and sr is sum yi minus and here's the model a naught minus a1 multiplied by xi uh, all to the power of two now here the reason the negative here is for slope because i took the parentheses off so the negative got distributed in um, so again, here r squared is equal to st minus sr divided by st, and here we have the same um, uh, code here. So let's actually do this at point three as well as we did with the previous one. So let's run this. So same answer. The only difference I see here is in the r squared. So the r squared usually because of rounding, uh, different roundings be between using the NumPy functions and also the for loop, you're gonna find that there is a change in the third decimal here. So here it says it captured 0.998. Uh, here it says a point ca it captured 0.995. Uh, so just slight differences when with just dealing with different decimals in each one of the functions. But you can see in terms of the uh, A naught, they're identical. And in terms of the uh, slope, they are identical. So uh, you can see the power of actually using inbuilt functions through designing this code. Uh, so if you're gonna be using in the future linear regression, I do um, suggest that you use the one that actually uh, leverages the power of NumPy. I wanted you to see this, to actually see uh, a lot of the uh, techniques that you have uh, learned up to this point and then uh, uh, transition uh, to this one. So to kind of recap what we learned in this lesson, we have developed uh, two linear regression codes. Uh, they're very simple. One uh, involved importing the data points, creating the sums, and also then creating a one, then creating the two mean values for X and Y, creating a naught, and uh, creating uh, R squared, then displaying the values here. We also found out that by leveraging two inbuilt functions within NumPy, the sum and the mean, we have significantly reduced uh, the size of this code from this uh, to what we have down here. Uh, so in the next lesson, we're going to actually go into a polynomial regression, which is basically a second order polynomial and higher. And we're also going to see how you can actually use a polynomial regression uh, to actually get linear because linear regression is actually a first order polynomial. So this is just a code to uh, to perform linear regression, but in the next lesson, the polynomial regression code can really do it for any uh, any uh, order polynomial, linear and above, uh, quadratic, cubic, and so on. Uh, so that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.